Good afternoon, everyone. Yesterday we started with the topic case taking. In that we discussed what is case. Uh, case is not merely a maze of symptom, but an instance of disease and event and change in the whole person from its original state of health to its present state of sickness. In short. Case taking is nothing but collecting symptoms, all the symptoms of alteration or collecting the totality of alteration. It comprises expression on mental plane, physical plane and logically we form the portrait. Then Dr. Master, our master Dr. Hanneman, he defines it as individualizing examination of a case of disease. So, case taking is called as a unique art because getting into conversation, observation, collecting information from patient as well as from bystander to define the patient as a person and diagnose the disease, the case taking is the primary and most important thing. Then the primary object of case taking is collection of data for prescription on basis of homeopathic philosophy. Then we discussed about the objectives that to understand the patient, case taking is necessary, then to refine the problem of the patient, to understand uh, the disease or to diagnose the disease, uh, then to attempt problem resolution and effective counseling if needed. Uh, to find out the characteristic symptoms and common symptoms in the disease. Then, to manage the case auxiliary, general and specific, to help the patient realize his problem so that he will cooperate in programming the treatment, to help patient ventilate his problem so that he is free carrying an emotional load. This has a great therapeutic value. Then finally to find out the constitutional, to find out the intercurrent and acute modalities so that the respective remedies could be selected. So to individualize the patient, case taking is very important and the proper case taking is important. With the help of the proper case taking only, we can able to individualize the person as well as we can able to know the patient as a person. The case taking for homeopathic management, it requires a background knowledge of various disciplines. The principle of homeopathy, basic medical sciences, clinical subject and communication skills. Case taking requires a great deal of experience and training. So not only knowledge about medical science, about homeopathy, about clinical subject, communication skill, other than that experience and training is also necessary. Then we are here that the case taking in our organon of medicine, in our book, Organon of medicine in our Bible, Organon of medicine. The case taking it was explained very well by our master Dr. Hanneman from about aphorism number 72 up to aphorism number 104. And all these aphorisms they are divided into two divisions. The first one is knowledge of disease. So, about the knowledge of disease. Dr. Hanneman, he explained it from aphorism number 72 to aphorism number 82. And the second group in case taking is case taking proper. It was started from aphorism number 83 up to aphorism number 104. So, the case taking proper was from aphorism number 83 to 104. But before Checking. The knowledge of disease is also very important and it was given 
from aphorism number 72 up to aphorism number 82. Case taking in organon. A concise idea about case taking it was given in aphorism number 5 in organon. Then general directions how do we take the probe or case, how we proceed for the uh, collecting symptoms, the general directions, the general guidelines, which things we do, which things we, we should not do while taking the case. These general directions it was explained, it was mentioned from aphorism number 83 up to aphorism number 104. Then if uh, out uh, from these aphorisms, there are different again according to patient how it was explained. So, if the patient coming directly, then it was explained from aphorism number 83 to 90 what the physician should do, how to approach the patient, or how to treat such patients. It was given from aphorism number up to aphorism number 90. Then patient coming from other physician. Many times the patient they came from the other physician or they uh, the, as the disease is chronic the patient was restless there is no patience so he moved from one physician to other physician and the he visit many doctors or sometimes one or two doctors but he was not getting result and so he approached uh, to homeopathy. Then it was explained how we should treat such patients. It was explained from aphorism number 91 to 93, means 91, 92 and 93 aphorism was explained. Then chronic case taking. Chronic case taking it was explained from aphorism number 94 to 98. Then acute case taking was explained from aphorism number 99 to 102. Appraising case taken it was explained in 100 and aphorism number 103. So, in this way, in our organ of medicine, in different aphorisms and about different type of patient, how should we treat such patients, how our plan of treatment, our plan of attending that patient, what should be our plan while attending such patients, it was given very well in different aphorisms from aphorism number 83 to 104 in organon of medicine. Hanneman in his book organon of medicine gave us many practical guidelines about homeopathic physician in various aphorisms like in aphorism number 3 and 4, Dr. Hanneman, he explained that the physician is one who possesses various, area, various areas of knowledge and an ability to perceive. So, who is the, who is called as physician? The physician is one, uh, the physician is the person who possesses various areas of knowledge and an ability to perceive. So, that person is called as physician. So, it was explained in aphorism number 3 and 4 who should be the physician. According to him, physician should have few requisites like he should be unscrupulized observer was given in aphorism number 6, 
so how the physician should be and visualized observer all you know about all these aphorisms because already you have studied in organon about these aphorism from aphorism number 1 to how much i don't know number of aphorisms you have completed but this is the first year syllabus only in first year syllabus uh, you have these aphorisms up to 104 it was also included in first year syllabus so all these aphorisms you know since first year and so you must know you should know what are the prerequisites of the physician then how the physician should be unprejudiced observer how he should be unprejudiced why he should be unprejudiced all this was given in aphorism number 6 then haneman classified diseases on the basis of causation in aphorism number 5 on the basis of causation he divided he classified diseases into two group that is acute disease and chronic disease disease produced by an exciting cause it is called as acute disease many times the acute condition it was produced by an exciting cause and when we remove that exciting cause then the patient feel better so many times the exciting cause is the main cause behind the acute disease disease manifested as a result of fundamental cause it is called as chronic disease so what is fundamental cause any miasmatic cause any fundamental reason behind the disease condition then it is called as chronic disease so dr hanneman classified the diseases into two group in aphorism number 5 when you go through this aphorism you will get that he classified diseases into two group that is acute disease and chronic disease the disease which was produced by an exciting cause it is called as acute disease and a disease manifested as a result of fundamental cause it is called as chronic disease acute diseases are caused by an exciting cause or acute miasma so what is exciting cause it is caused due to exciting cause acute diseases are caused due to exciting causes but what is exciting cause exciting cause may be defined as the cause which excites the disease condition either acute either acute disease or acute exacerbation in chronic disease so exciting causes are those causes which excite which increase the disease condition either acute disease or acute exacerbation in chronic disease the acute miasm comes on either with sufficient violence cause state of patient or with less violence wherein there is a period of progress and a tendency to recover 
So when the acute miasm comes, it comes with sufficient violence cause death of the patient or with, with less violence wherein there is period of progress or tendency to recover. Means many times as we know in acute cases the condition or the disease which starts suddenly and the Many times it starts suddenly, the condition it was violent, the disease was violent and sometimes though it was violent, it remained for or there is progress in the disease condition for some time and then there is tendency to recover. So, an acute miasm come on either with sufficient violence, so cause death of patient or with less violence wherein there is a period of progress and tendency to recover. So we will discuss it now one by one acute disease and chronic disease. So acute disease it was explained in mechanism number 72 and 73. It has sudden and violent onset rapid course but always terminates in a moderate time in recovery or death of the patient. As we know, in acute disease condition, there is acute miasm. It starts suddenly and violently. So, in acute disease, it has sudden and violent onset, rapid course. It increases rapidly, but always terminates in a moderate time. But it terminates, it decreases in a moderate time in recovery or death of the patient. So it always terminates in moderate time. It declines in moderate time and during termination either there is a recovery of the patient or death of the patient. Rapid morbid in aphorism number 72, it was given that rapid morbid processes of the abnormally deranged vital force which have a tendency to finish their course more or less quickly but always in a moderate time, these are termed acute diseases. What is acute diseases? It was only given in this slide also. It is rapid morbid process. It starts suddenly, progress suddenly and decline or there is death of the patient in short time. So it is rapid morbid process of abnormally deranged vital force which have a tendency finish their course more or less quickly but always in a moderate time and these are termed as acute diseases. So acute diseases are defined as diseases which begin suddenly, progress faster and run a definite course and finally end with recovery or death. These acute diseases, as we discussed, are caused by exciting cause or acute miasm, which was given in aphorism number 5. 
exciting cause is defined as the cause which excites disease condition either acute disease or acute exacerbation in chronic disease so this is about what is acute disease was given in aphorism number 72 then in aphorism number 73 classification of acute diseases it was given so acute diseases are classified into three group individual acute diseases sporadic acute diseases or epidemic acute diseases so individual diseases sporadic or epidemic diseases they are all acute conditions so in aphorism number 73 how the acute disease it was classified into three sub groups it was given so one by one we discuss about all these classification first individual acute disease is such kind of disease which attack human being individually so the name itself suggest it is individual acute disease means it attack one individual separately the disease is caused by excess in food or insufficient supply severe physical impressions that is chill over heating dissipation or mental emotions physical irritations strain so these may be the causes these may be the exciting factors behind this acute condition of the patient that they may be caused by excess in food insufficient supply of food severe physical impression like chill overheating or dissipation exposure to draft of cold air exposure to heat sun heat so these may be the reasons behind this disease condition so these are the exciting factors of the disease condition they are transient explosion of latent sora spontaneously return to its dormant state if acute disease were not of too violent character so as we know the acute diseases they come suddenly they progress fast and it may lead either into recovery or death of the patient so it is called as transient explosion of latent sora there is transient explosion there is sudden onset of latent sora spontaneously return to its dormant state if acute disease were not too violent so if it was not too violent then it return to its dormant state return to its previous state fastly or spontaneously this is about the individual disease means it affect one individual and there may be some exciting factor due to which that individual get affected then the second disease uh, second acute disease is sporadic acute disease so what is sporadic means it attacks several persons at the same time here and there sporadically this is 
the sporadic diseases or the diseases which attack several persons but not at one place the several persons they get affected but they are from different areas from different places so these conditions these diseases are called as sporadic acute disease means it attack several person at the same time but here and there and the, it is caused due to meteoric or climatic or telluric influences means due to soil due to water and injurious agent so due to soil due to polluted water due to climatic changes many persons they are suffering from the same type of symptoms at the same time but at different places so this is about the sporadic acute disease then the third type that is epidemic acute disease epidemic means it attack many persons with very similar suffering from the same cause so the cause is same the suffering is same and the affection of persons they are due to the same cause so epidemic acute disease it attacks many persons with very similar suffering from the same cause and it is excited by calamities of war inundation means flood due to famine means scarcity of food or starvation or due to acute miasma so epidemic diseases they attack many person with similar suffering from the same cause the examples are given the calamities of war due to flood due to starvation or due to acute miasm many persons they suffer from similar suffering uh, similar uh, due to similar cause So this is all about acute disease. It was what is acute disease? It was given in aphorism number seventy two, and how the acute diseases are classified in how many groups and how it was classified? It was given in aphorism number seventy three. So individual acute disease, sporadic acute disease, and epidemic. Acute disease. These are the three types of acute disease, and they are explained with the examples in aphorism number seventy-three. So this is all about the acute disease. Then chronic diseases. Chronic diseases. They are explained from aphorism number seventy-four up to aphorism number eighty-two. There are three types of chronic diseases. First is artificially produced chronic disease. There are of two types. That is curable and non-curable diseases. And it was given in aphorism number seventy-four, seventy-five, and seventy-six. Then pseudo chronic disease it was given in aphorism number seventy seven and true natural chronic disease that means sora syphilis and psychosis about these 
two natural cooling procedures. The explanation it was given from aphorism number 78 up to aphorism number 82. So in this way from aphorism number 74 to aphorism number 82 all the chronic diseases with its type it was explained very well remember there are three types artificially produced chronic disease pseudo chronic disease and true natural chronic disease artificially produced chronic disease means for example in allopathic treatment due to medicine some diseases they produce they are called as artificially produced chronic disease means due to long term use of any allopathic medicine we get some symptoms we get some other condition which we call as side effects of that medicine and this is called as that disease condition is called as artificially produced chronic disease so there are two types of these artificially chronic produced disease that is curable and non curable artificially produced chronic disease which was explained in aphorism number 74 5 and 76 then pseudo chronic disease it was explained in aphorism number 77 and true natural chronic disease it was explained from aphorism number 78 to 82. Then requisites according to Hanneman. In aphorism number 83, which are the requisites according to Dr. Hanneman, it was explained from aphorism number 82. It was explained in aphorism number 83. That is the demands or extra qualification of physician. The physician should be free from prejudice. He must have sound sense. He should be attentive. Fidelity in tracing picture of disease. He should actually record all the radiations. So which qualifications the physician should have? The first and most important thing is the physician should be free from prejudice. He should be unprejudiced observer. Then he must have sound sense. He should be attentive. Fidelity in tracing picture of disease. Should faithfully record all the radiations. So that it was easy to find out the exact minimum and these qualities, these demands, the qualified physician, the good physician should have and they should follow these things. So which are the requisites of the physician? It was explained in aphorism number 83. Then which are the do's of case taking? Which are the general guidelines of the case taking? It was explained from aphorism number 84 85 and 86 and in aphorism 88 89 and 90 so which should be the general guidelines while case taking 
which was explained in aphorism number from aphorism number 84 to 86 and from aphorism number 88 to 90.